Hi everyone, welcome back to Teacher Gia's channel. I know it's been a while, but you're back full swing. So today I have this Kenya National Examination Council KCPE 2023 503 Mathematics, October 2023. And the time candidates should take in doing this paper is two hours. So what, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you the things candidates need to know before sitting for a maths exam, how to prepare for a maths exam and how to score above 80% and above in mathematics. Besides that, you're going to do each and every questions from number one up to number 50 with full explanation and providing the answers too. So let's read the instructions first. Instructions to candidates. Please read these instructions carefully. You've been given this question paper and a separate answer sheet. The question paper contains 50 questions. Do any necessary rough work in this question paper. When you have chosen uh, your answer, mark it on the answer sheet only. Do not mark your answers on this question paper. So the first thing, you can use this question paper to work out anything you want, but don't mark your answers on this question paper for the candidates that are doing mathematics. There's always an answer sheet that you're given that's supposed to mark your answer. How to use the answer sheet? Use an ordinary pencil only. I'm not supposed to use like a pen. Uh, confirm that the answer sheet that you've been provided with has the following, your index number, your name, name of your school. First thing you need to know is that the most important thing here is writing down your index number. Always write your index number. Because with index number, they can get to know your name if you didn't write and also the name of your school. You need to write your index number the first thing before you start working out a mathematics paper. Do not mark any marks outside the boxes. Keep the sheet as clean as possible and do not fold it. For each of the questions 1 to 50, four choices are given. The choices are lettered A, B, C, and D. In each case, only one of the four choices is correct. Choose the correct answer. So you need to know. Even if you work out your maths and this, your, your answer is not in the choices, rework your maths again, like redo the question again. There's always an answer in the question, in the answer sheet, okay, in the choices, sorry. There's, they'll always, like even if there's no answer, they'll check which one is like close to an answer. There is always an answer in the choices, that is what you're, you're supposed to do. Because uh, these questions were revised by many teachers and definitely they came up with an answer. There is always an answer in the choices. So here we have example in this question, in the question paper, what is the value of uh, this? Um, the correct answer is C on the answer sheet. In the set of boxes number 12, draw a dark line inside the box with the letter C printed in it as indicated. So... As you can see here, this is how you're supposed to mark. So the answer is C here. Yeah. And you can see the way it has been crossed. It is uh the crossed line doesn't like uh appear outside the box, the bracket. So this is what you're supposed to do. Um your dark line must be inside the box. Uh for each question, only one box is to be marked in each set of focus four boxes. You're not supposed to mark two answers. In one question in the answer sheet uh for each question of have done that this question consists of 16 printed pages the last case p examination so this is the full paper and uh before sitting for an exam uh, you need to uh have done uh, multiple uh, questions on different topics you need to have revised a lot never go to a math paper and you've uh, not like touched any mathematics question within the past two weeks. You're supposed to do at least 10 questions, 10 to 20 questions each and every day on different topics. Test yourself on the hard questions. You know, before sleep on a maths exam, you have the chance to go and ask your teachers. Go ask your colleagues. Ask them. Or ask them, Kuliza si ujinga. Like when you ask something, it doesn't make you a fool, that is. So that is what you're supposed to do. Always have your mathematical set ready. Have a pen that has ink. Have a, a well sharped uh, pencil. Because uh, majority of the time we're going to use a pencil, especially in constructions. 
and you're, you're supposed to uh, just be prepared never panic when you're on an exam you can do the questions the first questions that you know always go for the questions that are uh you're well aware of before sitting for before going to the hard ones because you might uh, waste your time working out the hard questions that you don't and also don't get the answer yet you can work out the easier ones first mark the answers on the answer sheet and then go back to the hard questions you know you you earn more than somebody who's dwelling all their time on the hard questions and leaving the easier ones that they can do and time elapses also one thing I want to tell uh, anyone doing mathematics questions, not just for this KC, KC, uh, pay mathematics. Always, after finding an answer, go back to the question. What is the question asking? Never go to the next question without, uh, after writing your answer, going back and reading the full instructions that you were given. The last thing you're supposed to do after finding an answer is going back to the question. It will help you a lot. It will save you a lot. Because these questions are always like simple, but very, very tricky. Very, very tricky. After finding an answer, go back to the question. That is the trick to get even 98%, uh, 100% in mathematics. You can be very, very clever, but if you don't uh, go back to your question and see whatever the um, was being required, uh, you lose it. You might even get 60% yet you are 100% material. So let's begin. This is the first question. Okay, I've written it down first. What is 3,048,257 written in numerals? So 3 million has uh, six zeros. And then 48,000 has uh, three zeros. Then you write 48. Then uh, 257 uh, is that. And after that, we add uh, everything. So, as you can see, so we have 3,048,257. That is our answer. Then we go to the choices. <clears throat> we try and find any similar digits like the one in our answer. And uh, we get that it is, it is A. You need to be very careful because this, these digits are similar. So, we go to the question again. It says, what is 3,048,257? uh <clears throat> 57 so that is our answer question two what is the place value of seven in the number nine nine thousand eight hundred and forty three point zero seven one so we're going to write uh the digits down and then what you need to know is that um uh, all the digits are uh, after the decimal point to the right uh, start with tenths. There's no like ones. Then all digits after the decimal point to the left. They start with ones. So we're going to start with this on the the digits on the left. Uh, ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. Then uh, digits after the decimal points we have zero, which is tenths. Uh, seven hundreds. And one thousandth. So that is what we have there. Then we go back to the question. What is the place value of seven? The place value is hundredths. Uh, so we line it and we go to the choices and we have hundredths. So we have the place value of seven. Then we move to the third question. What is the next number in the pattern shown below? So the pattern consists of fractions and mixed fractions. So we're going to change all of them into fractions. So we have uh, 3 over 4. Uh, uh, 4 times 1 plus 1 is 5 over 4. Then we have 4 times 1 plus 3, that is 7 over 4. Then we have 4 times 2 plus 1, that is 9 over 4. So we have all of them in fractions now. So one similar thing is that all of them have uh, the same denominator, which is 4. So let's dwell on the new numerator first. Uh, so we'll write down uh, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Then we see uh, which number from 3 to 5 plus 2. Then we add here plus 2, uh, plus 2. And then definitely, since it's uh, sequential like that, 
we're going to add uh, 9 plus 2, we get 11. And remember, we had a denominator, which was 4. So our next number will be 11 over 4. And we change it into mixed uh, fraction or mixed number. We'll have like 2 and 3 over 4. So that is our answer. We go to the next number. So the choice is our choice C. There's no further instruction. So our answer is C. Question 4 is what is 3 over 8 as a percentage? So 3 over 8. Oh, if you want to find a percentage when given a fraction multiplied by 100%. So 4 goes there twice. 4 goes there 25 times. So we have 75 over 2. Uh, when you work out, uh, 2 into 25, 2 goes into 7 3 times. Minus 6, uh, remainder 1 into 15, 7 times. Uh, minus 14, we have 1. So... Our percentage is 37 and a half percent. So we go to the choices. Uh, the question is what is 3 over 8 as a percentage? And our answer is 37 and a half. So our next question. Charity cycled from home to school a distance of 12 kilometers. She started the journey at 7.20 a.m. and arrived at 8 a.m. What was her speed in meters per second? So the distance is uh, 12 kilometers. I didn't uh, put the answer there. So the distance here is 12 kilometers. And then you have uh, a starting time or departure time is 7.20 a.m. And arrival time or ending time is 8 a.m. With uh, ending time and starting time, we can calculate the time taken which is ending time minus starting time. So that will be 8 a.m. minus 7.20 a.m. So we minus 7, 1, so it remains 7. Then we carry this, so it becomes 60, 60 minus 20 is 40 minutes. So with that being said, 40 minutes, we have the time taken and we have the distance. Yeah, in kilometers and the time in minutes but the question is what was our speed in meters per second so first let's calculate the speed uh, so speed is distance over time taken um this 40 minutes uh we have in distance and kilometers so we have to change minutes into hours so we can only work out kilometers per hour and meters per second so 20 there twice 20 into 60 thrice so we have 2 over 3 hours. So the speed is distance over time taken. The distance is 12 kilometers. Divide by 2 over 3, which is the hours. That will be the reciprocal of, of 2 over 3. That is 12 over 1 times 3 over 2. Yes, so 2 year 1, 2 year 6. So we have 18 kilometers per hour. So the question is, what is, was her speed in meters per second? So, you know, someone would have stopped there. If he didn't go back to the what the question wanted, he would have wrong the answer. So we change uh, 18 kilometers into meters by multiplying by 1,000 divided by 1 times 3,600 uh, seconds. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. So we have, yes, that is what I'm explaining there. That is the division. That's why I've put one hour down. So we work out 18 there, once there, twice. So we have 2 here, once, 3 into 10, 5. So we have 5 meters per second. And that is our answer. What is the speed in meters per second? I hope you've understood that. So the next question is here with us. So that's question number 6. The figure below shows a trapezium UWXY. Uh, line yx is parallel to line uw uh, so you have uh, uw is parallel to yx uh, yx is 18 centimeters uh, parallel lines are straight lines moving in the same direction but they are uh, apart separated by a perpendicular line uh, so here the perpendicular distance between the parallel lines is 12 centimeters yes and we have uh, line yx is equals to 18 centimeters the area of the trapezium is 252 centimeter squared what is the length of line u w so we can see u w there so area of a trapezium is equals to 
a half into a plus b times height. So a plus b is at the two parallel lines, the distance. 252 is equals to a half uh, into a, like let's label y x as a, so that is 18, and u w to be b. So we don't have the the distance between u w, which we're looking for. So the parallel, okay, sorry. So plus b uh, times, so that is the b there. Then times the perpendicular distance, which is the height 12. So two there, once two there, six. So we have uh, 18 plus b times six. We have 252. So we can open the brackets. We have 108, like 18 times 6 is 108, plus 6B is equals to 252, the area. Then 108 will move to the uh, left. That will be minus 252 minus 108. Then you have 6B. So we'll divide uh, both sides by 6. We have 252 minus 108 is 144. So 6B divided by 6. 6 here, 1, 6 here, 1, 6 into 144 we have 6 times 2 which is 12 remainder 2 we bring 4 down 6 into 24 4 times minus 24 0 so answer is 24 centimeters and remember that is the value of b and b stood for line u w so length u w is equals to 24 centimeters so we go back to the question what is the length of line u w and our answer is 24 centimeters um that being said we move to the next question uh a teacher shared pencils among his learners the girls received two over three of the pencils and the boys received five over six of the remainder of uh, what are the girls left the remain the teacher remained with eight pencils how many pencils did the teacher have before sharing? So the total number of pencils that the teacher had. So before uh, donating or giving girl, the girls and the boys. So girls, uh, the fraction that of the pencils that they took is 2 over 3. 2 over 3. So we always we use the denominator to find the whole number. So we're being told the girls received 2 over 3 of the pencils and the boys received... 5 over 6 of the remainder, the teacher remained with 8 pencils. How many pencils did the teacher have before sharing? So girls have 2 over 3. So 2 over 3, the limiter is 3. So the whole number that we're going to start with here is 3 over 3. So to calculate the remainder, we'll have 3 over 3 minus 2 over 3. So the remainder is a third. And the boys received 5 over 6 of the remainder. So boys will be 5 over 6 of which means multiplication of 1 over 3. That is 5 over 6 times 1 over 3. We have 5 over 18. Uh, next, uh, we have... Uh, let me write that well. That shall remain with 8 pencils. So in order to calculate the remainder, we'll have to uh, add the number of pencils the boys and the girls got. We'll find the LCM of 18 and 3. <coughs> So 2 there, it doesn't go into 3, so it will just remain 3. 2 into 18, 9 times 3 there, into 3 once, into 3, 9, 3. So we have the LCM is 2 times 3 times 3. That is uh, 18. So 18 goes into 18 times 1, so that is 5 times 1, which is 5. 3 there, 6 times, so 6 times 2, that is 12. We have 17 over 18. So that is the number of pencils both the boys and the girls took. So supposed to calculate the fraction of the remainder. That will be 18 over 18 minus 17 over 18. So the LCM there is 18. So that is 1 over 18. That is the remainder. And we're being told the teacher remained with 8 pencils. How many pencils did the teacher have before sharing? So this 1 over 18 uh, fraction signifies the 8 pencils there. Is equals to like the eight pencils. So if one over eighteen is equals to eight, 
Uh, therefore, the whole number will be 18 over 18 using the denominator. 18 over 18 times 8 times 18 over 1. 18 there once, 18 there once. We have 18 times 8. So if we multiply, let me see, 18 times 8 is 64. We have 144 pencils. So that is the total number of pencils the teacher had before sharing. We move to the next question. Our school received 5,042 books. The books were delivered in two lorries. The first lorry had 3,016 books. How many books were in the second lorry? So, total number of books is equals to 5,042 books. Uh, the first lorry uh, carried like um, 3,016 books. I kept the number of lorries we stood in the first lorry, 3,016 books. So supposed to, cal to calculate the number of books that were carried in the second lorry, be 5,042 minus 3,016. So we calculate that is 6. 3 minus 2 is 3 minus 1 is 2. Uh, 0. 5 minus 3 is 2. So our answer is 2026. 20, Uh, so we move to the next question. We're done with that page. Um, question nine. What is the value of one and a half of uh, two over three minus one over six uh, bracket divided by one and one over four? So use board mass. So first, uh, the board mass and B stands for bracket. So we're going to calculate the bracket values first. 2 over 3 minus 1 over 6. So the LCM is 6. You have to calculate the LCM. So 3 into 6 times 2. So that is 2 times 2. 6 into 6 times 1. So that is 1 times 1. We have 3 over 6. Uh, we, f we simplify. So that is 3. There are 1, 3. So we have a half. So half of a half. Divide by 1 and 1 over 4. So 1 and 1 over 4 is 5 over 4. So that is, we calculate off because bracket off. So that is a half times a half. That is a quarter divided by 5 over 4. We have 1 over 4. That is the reciprocal. So it will be 4 over 5. So our answer is 1 over 5. We move to the next question. Um, cylindrical tins, each of diameter 20 centimeters and a height of 15 centimeters were placed or packed in a carton. The carton measured on 20 centimeters long, 80 centimeters wide and 30 centimeters. How many tins were packed in the carton? So we have the cylindrical tins, uh, with a height of 15 centimeters and a diameter of 20 centimeters. Then we have carton which has uh, 120 centimeters, 80 centimeters, and 30 centimeters. So uh, these things were packed in this carton, the cylindrical tins. So this uh, diameter will go down here, which means it will cover part of the length. So for us to know the number of tins that are packed on the length side, uh, we're going to do this. We're going to take the length of the carton divided by the length of the tins to know the number of tins that fitted on the length. So that is 120 over 20. That is 6 tins. Then we have the width also. The diameter uh, covered the part of the width. So we have 80 over 20. Uh, that is 4 tins uh, were placed on the width side then we have the height so what covers the height is uh 15 centimeters on the cylindrical side packed on the 30 centimeters carton so that will be 30 over 15 so that is two two layers like we'll have two layers of uh this six and four tins so we have number of tins will be six times four times two so our answer is 48 tins. I hope that's clear. 
Uh, next, we move to uh, question 11. What is the value of the values, the, the digits there? So, we're going to rewrite them again. 16.8 times 0 0.054 over 0 0.072. So multiply by the number of uh, decimal places we have, that is a total of four, and down is three. So we multiply by uh, a number that has four zeros, that is 10,000. One, two, three, four. Then we have 168 times 54 over, then one, two, three. Four. So we have three, 72, rem then we have the 10 that remained. Multiply by uh, which number like has the number of decimal points that will make the number of zeros to use to multiply. So we have there. Let me see. Um, eight goes there nine times uh, into one sixty eight twenty one times. Then we have three nine there ones nine there six times. Yes, so we have uh, 21 times 6 over 10. So we have, um, that is 21 times 6, 6, 12. So we have 126 over 10, the answer is 12.6. So we have um, a scale drawing of a rectangular plot of land measures 3 centimeters by 2 centimeters. The scale used is 1 to ratio 2000. What is the actual area of the plot in as? So it's a rectangular plot uh, that measures 3 centimeters by 2 centimeters. So what we're going to do, let's first draw the rectangle that is being talked about and it has a length of 3 centimeters and width of 2 centimeters. Then the scale is 1 to ratio 2000. So one centimeter represents two thousand centimeters. So that is what it means. Uh, we can find for three centimeters and two centimeters. So, uh, uh, if one centimeter represents two thousand meters, therefore three centimeters will represent three times two thousand, which is over one, which is six thousand centimeters. Then we do for also two centimeters. Therefore, 2 centimeters represents 2 times 2,000, which is 4,000 centimeters. Then, uh, 1 hours is equals to 100 meters square. 1 meter is equals to 100 centimeters. So, 1 meter square is like 100 centimeters times 100 centimeters find one meters so that is 10,000 centimeters squared then next let's calculate the area of this uh, rectangle we have now the length uh, is 6,000 when it's uh, on a scale drawing and 4,000 for the width so area of a rectangle is equals to um, 6,000 times 4,000, that is length times width, is equal to 6,000 times 4,000, that is 24 million centimeters squared. Uh, thereafter, uh, 1 meter square is equal to 10,000 centimeters squared so i think let's change this first into meters square so we'll say if 10000 centimeters squared is equals to 1 meter square therefore 24 million centimeters squared is equals to 24 million times 1 over 10000 so we cancel the number of zeros. We remain with 2,400 meters squared. 
uh, our answer is like what is the actual area in us so if a hundred meters square remember one as is equal to 100 meters square therefore 2400 meters squared is equal to 2400 times one over 100 so we cancel with the zeros we remain the 24 as as our answer so that is choice d next what is the value of x in the equation 24 to oh sorry 2x over 3 minus 4x over 9 is equals to 12 so 2x Uh, 2x over 3 minus 4x over 9 is equals to 12. So, the LCM here is 9 if you calculate. So, we'll multiply all sides by 9. That is what you're going to do. So, if the LCM is 9, 3 times, uh, 3 goes into 3 times 3. So, that is 3 times 2, that is 6x minus 9 goes into 9 minus 1, so that is 4x times 1, that is 4x is equals to 12. So multiply by 9 also here. We also multiply by 9 this side. Uh, sorry, I left some part of the video while I was explaining. My phone, my phone went off. So if you multiply by 9 this side and so by 9 this side, we'll have... We'll remain with 6x minus 4x is equals to 12 times 9 is 108. Then 6x minus 4x is 2x uh, is equals to 108. So we divide all sides by 2. 2 goes into 2, it cancels. 2 goes into 108, 54. So our answer is x is equals to 54. Uh, so guys, as you can see on this page, I had already done it, but unfortunately, I lost the video so I'll just take you through it uh, this is from question 14 to question 18 so I'm trying to look for something that I can use to point so what is um, 567,432 rounded off to the nearest 10,000 so here it is uh, we will first write the place value so 2 is 1's 10's 100's 4 4 then 7 is 1000's then six is tens of thousands, then five is hundreds of thousands. So what is the what is that number rounded off to the nearest ten thousand? So tens of thousands is here. We point out to the place value that is up is thousands. So we follow it here is seven. Seven is above five. So it will increase uh, six by one. So we'll have fifty seven thousand. That is the number rounded off to the nearest tens of thousands. Next question, three bells ring at intervals of 12 minutes, 24 minutes, and 36 minutes. They rang together at 10 a.m. When was the last time they rang together before 10 a.m.? So we find the place value. Uh, you guys don't worry. I think it's at night and my shadow. I don't want the shadow to come where I'm explaining. So 2 goes into 12, 6. 2 goes into 24 12 2 goes into 36 18 so we do that it's like we're finding the lcm here and then lcm is equals to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 it is 72 minutes so we change this into hours and minutes we'll have one hour 12 minutes the so the three bells rang at 10 a.m when was the last time they rang together before 10 a.m so it will be 10 a.m minus uh one hour 12 minutes to find the starting time that they rang before the 10 a.m so um zero zero cannot minus 12 so we borrow one from 10 it remains nine but when one hour crosses this it becomes 60 minutes so 60 minus 12 is 48 then 9 minus 1 is 8 so it is 8 48 a.m uh that is what we have here next question the area of a semicircle is 39.25 centimeters squared what is the length of the diameter so this is my semicircle don't laugh area is equals to 39.25 then area is equals to a half pi r squared over semicircle then 39.25 is equals to a half times 3.14 times r squared so you're finding r here 
then we multiply by 2 by 2 and also this one by 2 2 will cancel this two then we divide by 314 over 314 it will cancel so uh, we will remove this decimal places points by multiplying by the number of decimal places. so one two here also one two so we multiply by a hundred it will cancel the decimal places so we'll have two times that three three thousand hundred and twenty five over three fourteen three fourteen goes there once it goes there twelve point five so twelve point five times two is twenty five is equals to r squared so if you want to find r we find the square root of twenty five r is equals to five centimeters but the question was what is the length of the diameter so diameter is r times two so five times two our answer is ten centimeters there and then a people reported to a boarding school on 27th january 2019 he went for a midterm break on 18th march 2019 how many nights did he spend in school so on this 27th january 2019 where the school the student reported he slept in school then on 27th 28th 29th 30th and 31st these these five days the student slept in school before we entered february so it, remember it was 2019 this number should be divisible by 6 for for us to call 2019 a leap year. So you're supposed to divide 4 by 2019. Uh, it is not divisible. So the number of days is 28 days. If it were a leap year, it would have been 29 days. So 2019 is not a leap year, which could have considered of 29 days if it were divisible. So so you have 28 days for February. And then he went for a midterm break on 18th March. So on this 18th March, he never slept in school. So we have from 1st March up to 17th. So that is 17 days. So we'll have the 5 days in January, 28 days in February, and 17 days in March. So if you add, it comes to a total of 50 days. I hope that's clear. Uh, the area of a square plot of land is 0 0.057 hectares. The plot was fenced all round using 5 strands of wire. What was the total length of the wire I used. So it is a square plot, square. So a square has all sides equal. So this is the area, hectares. So the first thing we're going to do is change hectares into meter square. One hectare is equal to 10,000 meter square. So if one hectare is equal to 10,000 meter square, 0 0.057 hectares will be 0 0.0576 times 10,000 over one. You'll have 576 meter square. Area of a square is equals to length squared. So 57, 576 is equals to L squared. To find L, we find the square root of 576, which is 24 meters as the length of one side. So all sides are equal. So 24, 24, 24, 24. Totally fenced. So the plot was fenced all round. It was fenced from here to here to here to here. So that means you're going to find perimeter. Perimeter is the distance all round a closed figure. A square is a closed figure. So perimeter of a square is length times 4. So 24 times 4 is 96 meters. That is not the question. And you can see 96 is also here in the choices. It was uh, fenced using 5 strands of wire. So all round once, twice, thrice, four times until the fifth so it will be 96 times five uh which is all round once times five so it is 480 meters here so that is our answer uh, so on question 19 a pipe has a diameter of 0 0.7 meters and a length of three meters the outer surface of the pipe was painted what was the area that was painted so uh it's a pipe which means it's hollow it doesn't have the ends the circle parts of the end because a pipe has to pass out water so uh the outer surface is like the rectangular part so so here we have to find like the circumference like this uh curved part on the upper part and then the length here is three meters so to find the length of the rectangular part uh, uh we find the circumference of uh, uh this outer surface that was painted and circumference of a circle is pi d so so 22 over 7 times uh, 0 0.7, which is the diameter. 7 goes there, 1, 7 into 0 0.7, 0 0.1. So we have 2.2 meters as the length. And we're supposed to find the area of the painted part, which is rectangular. Now area is equals to length times width. So it's 2.2 times 3. We have 6.6 uh, meters squared. That was the question. 
uh next um what is the value of that when n is equals to 2r is equals to 3 and y is equals to 5 so we rewrite so it's 4 4 n squared that will be 4 into n is 2 2 squared also a bracket of r which is 3 plus 5 y uh, plus n is 2 times y which is 5 uh, over r which is 3 plus y which is 5 minus n which is 2 so 2 squared is uh, 4 times uh, 4 is 16 into 3 plus 5 is 8 plus 2 times 5 is 10 so 160 uh, that is over okay let's do the over first 3 plus 5 is 8 minus 2 is equals to 128 plus 10 over 6. That is um, 138 over 6. 6 into 138. 6 goes into 13 twice. Minus 2 remainder 1. I do that calculation. You'll have um, 23 as the answer. Uh, printing press produced 11,457 books on Monday. It produced 308 more uh, books on Tuesday than on Monday. On Wednesday, it produced 4,796 4, less books than the total uh, number produced both on Monday and Tuesday. How many books were produced in the three days? So, so on Monday, uh, it produced 11,457 books. On Tuesday, it produced 308 more books than it produced 308 more books on Tuesday than on Monday. So that will be on Monday plus 308 books. That will be 11,457 plus 308. You get 11,765 65 books. So uh, addition, okay. Uh, on Wednesday, it produced 4,796 less books than the total number produced both on Monday and Tuesday. So Wednesday, it will be Monday plus Tuesday minus 4,796. So we'll have 11,457 plus 11,765 in brackets minus 4,796. Uh, if you add, you'll have 23,222 minus 4,796. That uh, is less. And it will bring a total of, uh, uh, let me see, 18,426 books that were uh, produced on Wednesday. And our question was, how many books were produced in the three days? We're supposed to add 11,000. 457 plus 11,765 plus 18,426. It brings a total of 41,648 books. Yes, and we move to uh, the next question. A cylindrical container has a diameter of 56 centimeters and a height of 30 centimeters. The container is half filled with water. How many liters of water are in the container? So it's a cylinder of 30 centimeters height and a diameter of 56 centimeters. First, we'll calculate the volume of this whole cylinder. But let's get in our mind that it is half filled. So, volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times height, 22 over 7 times 28 times 28 times 30, which is the height. So, if you calculate uh, 7 there, 1, 7 there, 4 times, if you calculate, you'll have 73,920 centimeters cube. Then uh, one liter is equals to 1,000 centimeters. 
cube and the question wants how many liters so you have to change centimeters cube into liters so as i had said one liter is equal to a thousand centimeters cubed so we have to change that into liters so we'll write if a thousand centimeters cube is equals to one liter therefore 73,920 centimeters cube is equal to 73,920 centimeters cube times one over a thousand cancel the zeros and the small place to move we have 73.92 liters and remember it was half filled with water so we'll divide by two we'll have 36.96 liters Uh, since I was the one holding the camera, so I couldn't like construct uh, while showing. So I did the construction. We are told uh, PQ is equal to 10 centimeters angle RPQ, RP there, and Q is 40 degrees. Is equals to angle RQP is equal to 40 degrees. So there and there, that's like 40, 40, and I socially triangle. Therefore, the up there is 100 degrees. We are told to find the construct a circle that touches the vertices pqr so i did the construction and when i measured the diameter it's 10 centimeters so that's it uh always ensure that your pencil is well sharpened so that you get the values correctly so you move to the next question uh, a van is loaded with 120 cartons each containing 40 packets of salt. The mass of each empty carton is 500 grams and each mass of each packet of salt is 750 grams. What is the total mass of the load in kilograms? So the number of cartons is equals to 120. And uh, each carton contains 40 packets. And okay, each carton weighs 500 grams and each packet weighs 750 grams so total number of packets it will be if each carton weigh, uh, carries 40 packets so it will be 120 the number of cartons times 40 it brings 4,800 packets. So you can calculate actually the weight of the packets now because each packet has 750 grams. So weight of packets is equal to 4,800 times 750 grams. We'll have 3,600,000 3, grams. grams we can change that into kilograms by dividing by a thousand cancel the zeros we remain with 3600 kilograms uh so the weight of chiton we can calculate that uh each measuring 500 grams so weight of chitons will be 120 times 500 which gives us 60,000 grams we change into kilograms by dividing by a thousand we'll have 60 kilograms so the total mass, uh, both the carton and the packets, will be 3,600 plus 60. We'll have 3,660 kilograms. So that's uh, choice B. So on this question, Calvin deposited 15,000 in a bank. The bank paid compound interest at the rate of 12% per annum. What was the total interest paid by the bank at the end of two years? So, uh, it's about compound interest. And in compound interest, we have uh, amount, which is principal plus interest. And to calculate the formula for finding amount is principal into 1 plus R over N times NT. So, the principal is equal to the initial deposit. R is the annual interest rate in decimal. N is the number of times that interest is compounded by your entity is the time taken. So the principal is 15,000. That is the initial money that um, Calvin deposited. And then 
into 1 plus r is equals to like the rate so it is 12 percent sorry i didn't know my camera wasn't showing that part so 12 percent into decimal it will be 12 over 100 which will be 0 0.12 0 0.12 over n the number of times that interest is compounded so it's annually so n is one uh power nt n is one times time duration we told is two years so we'll have uh fifteen thousand into one over one plus zero point one two over one power two is equals to fifteen thousand into one point one two power two is equals to fifteen thousand into one point two five four four um that is eighteen thousand eight hundred and sixteen which is the amount and for us to calculate the interest we have to work with amount and principal so the formula for amount was principal plus interest so that is amount is equals to principal plus interest then uh, to find interest it will be amount minus principal so is equals to interest so here we'll take eighteen thousand eight hundred and sixteen minus the principal which was fifteen thousand When you subtract, you have 3,816 shillings. And that is our answer. Choose B. Our next question. Nti Mama had 40 cows and 55 goats in his farm. He sold 10% of the cows and increased the number of goats by 20%. What was the new number of animals in the farm? So cows were 40 and goats were 55. Then he increased the cows by 10. He decreased the cows by 10% and increased the goats by 20%. So that is, for the cows it will be 100% minus 10%. Uh, he'll remain with 90% of the cows. So 90 over 100 times 40. And we cancel the zeros. We have 36 cows. Uh, also, uh, he increased the goats by 20. That will have 120 over 100 times 55. And then we'll have 660, 55 times 12 is 660, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, 660 over 10. So we'll have uh, 66 goods. And then the question was, what was the new number of animals in the farm? So we'll have 66 plus 36, which is... Um, 102 which is the number of animals so once you see uh the area of a right angled triangle is 54 centimeters squared uh the length of the one of the shorter sides is 12 centimeters what is the perimeter of the rectangle so it's a right angled triangle so area is 54 centimeters squared. Uh, the shorter side 12. Uh, we don't know about the height or the hypotenuse, but through the area we can calculate the height. So area of a triangle triangle is half the same. So, so a half times 12 times height. So 2 there, 2 into 12, 6 divided by 6. So 9 centimeters is equal to height. And the question wants us to find the perimeter. So we have to find the hypotenuse. So perimeter is distance all around a closed figure. So 
So we have to find the hypotenuse and for, for us to calculate the hypotenuse, the formula is uh, base squared plus height squared is equals to hypotenuse squared. 12 squared plus 9 squared is equals to hypotenuse squared. 144 plus 81 is equals to hypotenuse squared. 225 is equals to hypotenuse squared. Hypotenuse is equals to the square root of 225. And our answer is 15 centimeters for hypotenuse. And you can see it's also in the choices. So we need to be very careful what is the perimeter. So we'll have 12 plus 9 plus 15 is equals to 36 centimeters. So that is our answer, choice C. Our sales lady earns a basic salary of 10,500 per month. She also earns a commission on sales above 100,000. In one month, she sold items worth 150,000 and earned a total of 18,000. What was the percentage commission? So basic salary is 10,500 shillings. Uh, the commission is uh, so on sales above a hundred thousand. The total sales is one hundred and fifty thousand that he sold, that she sold. So therefore, we can collect it on total earning. Or oh, we have already it's eighteen thousand. So through uh, total earning and basic salary, we can calculate the commission that the sales lady and commission is total earning. Minus basic salary, so eighteen thousand minus ten thousand five hundred, we have seven thousand five hundred as the commission. And the question is percentage commission. So percentage commission is equals to a commission over total sales times hundred percent. So that is seven thousand five hundred over one hundred and fifty thousand times hundred percent. So we have five percent as the commission. Next, we move to question twenty nine. A rectangular floor uh, measures uh, seven point five meters long and two point five meters wide. The floor is covered with square tiles of side zero point one five meters. How many tiles were used to cover the floor completely? So it's a rectangular floor of seven point five meters and 2.5 meters uh, we have the square tiles all sides are equal of 0 0.5 meters so area of a rectangle if I calculate that is length times width 7.5 times 2.5 we have 18.75 meters squared then area of a square tiles uh, is equals to length times length that is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is equals to 0 0.25 meters squared. Number of tiles is equals to area of the rectangle over area of the square. It will be 18.75 over 0 0.25. And it will bring, if you, if you remove the decimal points and you divide it, you'll have 75 tiles so that is our answer, choice B. The next question is the value of uh, the, val the digits there. So use board mass. So 7 into 3 squared is 9 plus 4 minus 5 times 8 divided by 2 plus 6. So 7 times 9 plus 4 is 13. Minus 5 times 8 divided by 2 plus 6. So 7 times 13 is 91 minus 5, t 5, 5 times 8 divided by 2 plus 6. So we have... Um, 
91 minus 5 times uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4 plus 6. So we have 91 minus 20 plus 6. So we have 91 plus 6 minus 20. That's 97 minus 20. Our answer is 77. Choice A. So next question, the figure below shows a triangle drawn inside a semicircle. So we have the triangle and we have the semicircle and then they want the shaded part. So we'll have to calculate the uh, area of the semicircle, then area of the triangle and subtract. And then we find the area of the shaded parts. So we don't have the hypotenuse to find the circumference. So we have to calculate. That's the formula. Hypotenuse squared is equals to 21 squared plus... 28 squared. Hypotenuse squared is equals to 400 and 21 times 21 is what? 441 plus 784. Hypotenuse squared is equals to 1225. So to find hypotenuse, it will be the square root of 1225. Hypotenuse is equals to 35 centimeters. So the 35, we can calculate the area of the semicircle. And also we have uh, the area, we have to calculate the area of the tri right angle triangle, then we subtract to find the area of the shaded part. So area of a semicircle is equals to a half pi r squared, but also use 22 over 7, so a half times 22 over 7. times the radius now will be 35 divided by 2, 17.5 times 17.5 so 7 there once, 7 there 2.5, 2 here once, 2 here 11 so our area will be, if you calculate, you'll have um, 481.25 centimeters squared Uh, area of a right angle triangle. I don't know why I wrote rectangle. It is right angle triangle. Sorry about that. It's equals to a half times base times height. So a half times 21 times 28. Two there ones there 14 times. We have, uh, if you calculate 21 times 14, you have 294 centimeters squared. So you have the area of the semicircle and right angle triangle. So area of the shaded part we have to subtract so 481.25 minus 294 we will have 187.25 centimeters squared uh, next is what is the square root of six and a quarter so uh, six and a quarter what is the square you remember you see that uh, so six and a quarter is equals to 6 times 4 in brackets plus 1 over 4 that is 24 plus 1 that is 25 over 4 and the question was squared so that is 625 that is 25 times 25 over 16 that is 4 times 4 so our answer is 39 and 1 over 16 if you find the square uh, the next question, a family uses 30 deciliters of milk every day. How many liters of milk did they use during the months of February and March 2016? So one day they used 30 deciliters. February 2016 is a leap year because it is divisible by 4, so it has 29 days. And then March has 31 days. So the total number of days should be 31 plus 29 is equals to 60 days. 60 plus times 30 deciliter that I use per day, that is 1,800 deciliter. Uh, we divide by 10. So we have 180 liters as our answer. Choice C. So, a cuboid measures 6 cm long, 5 cm wide, and 4 cm high. 
what is the total length of the ages so this is the cuboid it is six centimeters long five centimeters or wide and four centimeters so this is the length width and the height so let us make it the cube that can be seen you can see here the edges are this length so we have four centimeters another four centimeters another four centimeters and four centimeters so that will be four times four then you have five here twice three four that will be five times four then we have six one two three four so that is six times four so we have 16 20 and 24 when you add all of them the answer will be 60. Uh, we move the cash price of a sewing machine is shillings 24,800. The higher purchase price is 15% more than the cash price. Joseph purchased the machine of on higher purchase terms. He paid a deposit of 8,520 and 10 equal monthly installments. How much was the monthly installment? So we have the cash price, which is shillings. 24,800. The higher purchase price is 15% more than the cash price. So higher purchase price, cash price is always 100%. Higher purchase price is 15% more, so that is 115%. So we can calculate the higher purchase price. So if 100% is equals to 24,000, 800 therefore 115 percent is equals to 115 times 24,800 over 100 cancel this one cancels we'll have uh, the amount will be 28,520 as the higher purchase price and then joseph purchased a machine on higher purchase terms he paid a deposit of 8,520 so the seat is 8,520 and 10 equal monthly installments. Number of installments is 10. So higher purchase price, the formula is um, deposit plus total monthly installments. We have the higher purchase, which is 28,520 shillings. Deposit is 8,520 plus. We have... Uh, number of months which is this and the monthly installments that we don't know so uh, for us to calculate the monthly installment this one will move to the left to subtract it from 28,520 then we remain with the 10 m so when you subtract 28,520 minus 8,520 we remain with the 20,000 divide by 10 Divide by 10, 10, 10. So we have 2,000 shillings is a monthly installment. And that is our answer there. How much was the monthly installment is the question. Then we move. The average mass of 36 pupils is 45 kgs. The average mass of the pupils together with their teachers is 46 kgs. How much more is the mass of the teacher than the mass of average mass of the pupils? So, uh, number of pupils is 36, and their average mass is 45. Then the, num the average mass of the pupils together with their teacher, so total number of people together with their teacher, which means there will be an addition of 31 percent now will be 37 and we're being told the average mass now becomes 46 isn't it yes so this is like the mean and the mean of 36 people and this is the mean for 37 people so we can collect the total mass of uh, the number of people only and the average so total mass will be mean times number of 
students it will be 36 times 45 uh, that will be 1620 kgs and then we also calculate the total weight of uh, them including the teacher it will be 37 times 46 which will be 1702 kgs so this one is the total number of people only plus the shape becomes this one so you can calculate the weight or mass of the teacher will be 1702 minus 1620 which will be 82 kgs but the question is how much more is the mass of the teacher than the average mass of the pupils that will be 82 average mass of the pupils was 45 we'll have 37 kgs as the answer uh, the mark price of a bag of beans was 4,500. A school bought eight bags of beans at a total of cost of 34,400 shillings. What was the total discount allowed? So, the marked price of one bag is 45,000. A school bought eight bags. So, the marked price that could be for eight bags will be 36,000 if you calculate shillings and then a school bought eight bags of beans at a total cost of 34,400 so cost price that the school bought was 34,400 so definitely there was a discount here discount is equals to marked price minus cost price so it will be 36,000 minus 34,000 400 so we have the discount as 1600 shillings a trader bought 10 crates of soda at 600 shillings per crate he paid 30 shillings per crate for transportation each crate of soda contained 24 bottles but 10 bottles broke during transportation he later sold each bottle of soda for 30 shillings what percentage profit did the trader make so I trade about number of crates is 10, each at 600 shillings. So the total amount that he used was 600 times 10 to purchase the 10 crates. So he, uh, the trader had, okay, the trader used 6,000 shillings. And then he paid 30 shillings per crate for transportation so he paid transportation 30 shillings per crate which is 10 so he used 300 shillings each crate of soda contained 24 bottles each crate contained 24 bottles so number of bottles is equals to 24 times 10 is to 40 bottles but 10 bottles broke during transportation so remaining bottles will be 240 that arrived uh, where the crates were being taken will be 230 bottles he later sold each bottle at 30 shillings so on this remaining ones he sold selling price to 30 times 30. 30 times 30 is 6900 shillings uh, what percentage profit percentage profit the trader make so uh, here we for us to find profit is equals to selling price minus buying price so this is a selling price buying price would be 600 shillings plus the transportation money uh, this one and this one so that would be 6300 was the buying price like the money used during buying everything spent so 6900 minus 6300 remaining uh 600 shillings as the profit but the question was what percentage profit did the trader make percentage profit is equals to profit over buying price times a hundred percent is equals to 600 over the buying price which was 6300 times 100 percent so this one cancels zero zero cancels zero and then here 
which number goes into both of uh, this I don't think so let's just oh, work out so 63 it doesn't go here so you have to multiply think times 9 it goes it will 63 times 9 7 27 54 56 remaining 33 so we have 9 and 33 over 63 so 3 goes here 11 3 goes here 21 so our answer is 9 and 11 over 21 percent so that is the answer there percentage a poultry farmer bought the following items two chick feeders at 85 shillings five bags of chick mash at 450 shillings four bags of growers mash uh, at 650 shillings two packets of chick formula for 150 shillings she paid for the items using six 1000 shillings not how much balance did she get so at means each so for chick feeders you bought two chick feeders at 85 so that will be 2 times 85 which is 170 shillings and then um, chick mash 5 bags of chick mash at 5 times 450 each at 450 so this one will be 45 times 5 5 25 And then we have growers mash four times six fifty shillings. That will be <coughs> is it two thousand six hundred shillings? Then we have two packets of chick formula four. Now this one is not at so four, which means everything. The two the uh, two packets costed one fifty shillings. Chick formula. This was chick feeder formula will be 150 shillings so we'll add all of them uh the total cost will be 5170 shillings then she paid for the items using six 1000 shillings uh 1000 shillings times six like there were six notes so that was six thousand he paid six thousand shillings so how much balance did she get it will be six thousand minus five thousand one hundred and seventy we have a balance of eight hundred and thirty shillings next question is this one in the figure below line rs rs and tu are parallel line vw is a transversal uh, which of the following statement is correct? So, uh, angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. That is all you need to know. Uh, yes, so angles on a straight line. So, let's say, let's assume inside here is 60 degrees, which means this side will be 120 degrees, angles on a straight line. Uh, this one, this angle A is opposite angle C, so it will be 120 degrees they are equal opposite angles are equal 60 degrees here opposite angles are equal so 60 degrees uh, and then this angle here is equals to this angle and also if you add 60 and 120 you'll get 180 they're supposed to add up to 180 and opposite angles are equal so you can see the equal here then angles on a straight line 120 degrees 120 degrees so the, you're just supposed to use any uh examples of values that you can use to see if they are correct you come up with the one that you feel flexible about so the first one angle a is equals to angle f angle a is here is equals to angle f angle a and angle f also that's not true because angle a is 120 and angle f is 60 degrees Angle C plus A, so we'll just say 120 plus E. Where is E? 120. 
So that's 240 is equals to 180, so that's wrong. Uh, angle G and plus D, G, 120, plus D, 60, is equals to 80, so that's correct. Angle D plus H, D, 60, plus H, 60, is equals to angle A, 120, plus angle E, 120, so that's wrong. So our answer is C. So on this question here, Juma bought a pair of trousers for shillings R. He also bought a pair of shoes for twice the price of a pair of trousers and a shirt for half the price of the pair of trousers. He paid using two X notes shillings. Which one of the following expressions represent ju balance Juma got? So Juma bought a pair of trousers for shillings R and then shoes uh, a pair of shoes for twice the price of R, so it would be 2 into R. And then uh, a shirt, half the price of the pair of trousers, so half of R. So he paid using total paid using two X notes. So 2x, that is the amount he paid using. So we find the total of this will be r plus 2r plus half r. So this one will be 3 and a half r, because this one stands for 1. So 1 plus 2, 3 plus half is 3 and a half r. So this one uh, is the total money he spent, but paid using 2x notes. So it will be 2x minus 3 and a half r. Uh, which one of the flowing represents Juma's balance? So this is the balance. You need to be very keen here, 2x. And so the answer is 2x minus this one. Uh, next question. The flowing pie chart shows sales made by a farmer in a certain day. So this one. Maize, mangoes, bananas, and... Uh, cabbages. The value of the cells for maize was 880 shillings. What was the value of the cells for bananas? So angles at a point add up to 360 degrees. Therefore, we can find the uh, maize uh, in degrees, the degree representing maize. So we have maize. It will be angles at a point they should add up to 360 degrees. So for us to find the value for maize, so it will be 360 minus 80 plus 130 plus 110 uh, degrees. So that will be, um, let me see, 360 minus 320, which will be 40 degrees. So we have like here yeah, 40 degrees. It stands for the degrees of the maze. And we mean told that 880 shillings costed the maze. So uh, if 40 degrees is equal to 880 shillings. Therefore, out of the value, they want the sales for the bananas, but we have to calculate the total uh, amount that will cost. That is degrees. Sorry, I put percentage. So the total is 360 degrees for the whole um, sales. So we'll have 360 times 880 over 40 degrees. I'm calculating like the total amount, the value of the sales, uh, the total values of the sales, I mean. So... From there, from the short cells, we'll use to calculate the one for bananas. So 40 there, once there, 9, then we'll find 7,920. That is the total cells. Then we have if 360 degrees is 7,920. Therefore, uh, the one for bananas, 130 degrees, is equals to 130 times 7,920 over 360 uh zero cancels zero if you calculate uh, let me see 36 times one and twenty you find two thousand eight hundred and sixty is the amount for bananas and that is the answer then i move to this next question which one of the following let me try and make the paper very well which one of the following statements is correct about all right angle triangles? 
So a right angle triangle has to have a one degree that has 90. So we have to put that symbol to signify uh, 90 degrees, which, which stands for right angle triangle. And so angle sum of uh, an, an enclosed right angle triangle add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, if here is 90 degrees, then we have to calculate the value of this one and this one. And due to that, they'll be sharing like a 90 degrees. So like maybe it will be 57 and um, 33, something of that sort to give us 90. And then when you add to this 90, it becomes um, 180 degrees. So the main solution of the final statement is correct about all right angle triangles. Two sides are equal, I doubt. Um, two angles are right angles. Two angles are right angles. But being told which one is correct. They can't be two angles are right angles because only 90 degrees there. These are the ones share. So this one is wrong. Two sides are equal. It's not an isosceles triangle. The largest angle is 90 degrees. Uh, yes, because these ones share the 90 degrees remaining to make angle sum. Interior angle sum to be 180. The longest side is opposite the smallest angle. You'll never know. Because you know if it's the opposite of this or this one, so our answer is C. Eighteen men working at the same rate can complete a job in thirty days. How many more men working at the same rate can complete the same job in twelve days? So you write here men and days. Eighteen men working at the same rate can complete a job in thirty days. How many more? men can, working at the same rate can complete the same job in 12 days so if 18 men can work for 30 days if you want them to work for uh, lesser days you have to increase the number of men who are working so the ratio here will be an increment so it would be 30 over 12 times 18 six year twice six year thrice two year once two year 15. so you have 45 men will work for this 12 days but the question is how many more men so it is 45 minus 18 and our answer is 27 more men that is the answer we move here the following are properties of quadrilaterals all sides are equal opposite angles are equal all angles are equal Diagonals bisect each other. Which one of the following is true about rhombus? So rhombus is a slanted square. And all rhombus, all sides are equal. So all sides are equal is correct. Opposite angles are equal. That's true. If here is 120 degrees, opposite angle will be 120 degrees. Then here 60, here will also be 60, such that when you add all of them, you get 360 degrees, angle sum of the interior. All angles are equal, no, because here can be 120 and there is 60. Diagonals bisect each other, which is true. They divide each other into two equal parts. So our answer is 1, 2, and 4. Choice D. Which of the following statement is correct? Here you have to calculate each and every one. So the first one is 0 0.5 is greater than 48%. We'll have a look at that. So the easiest way is to change into percentage. I don't know, it's not that clear. So when you want to change this 0 0.45 as a percentage, you'll multiply by 100%. You'll cancel this one. You'll cancel. You'll have 45% is greater than 48 percent which is not true uh, a quarter is less than 0 0.2 we'll have to change this a quarter into a decimal so we do that uh, four doesn't mean once we write zero point we add a zero four goes into ten twice uh four times two is eight remainder two four cannot be into so we add a zero four into here five so that is zero. So you have 0 0.25 is less than 0 0.2. Okay, you can't really know with this one. So let's multiply by it. This one has two, two decimal places. 
this one as one so we'll multiply change into percentage so 25 percent is less than 20 percent that is not true because it's bigger than 20 percent then we change this one three quarter is equals to 0 0.85 let's change all this as a percentage i think when you change all these things as a percentage it's, it's way easier so let's multiply by 100 percent let's multiply by 100 percent four goes here once four goes here 25 25 times 3 is 75 percent is equals to zero will cancel it will move so that is 85 percent so it is not also true then we have the remaining one 0 0.36 is greater than 7 over 20 let's multiply by 100 percent have 36 percent is greater than 20 year once 20 year 5 35 percent so this one is correct because that 36 percent is greater than 35 so this sign means greater than the right hand is okay what i always tell myself is the right hand always works so hard than the left hand so this one the right hand means greater and the less one means uh the left hand like less so this side is less that lesser than this one means greater than so we move to question 47 construct triangle pqr such that line pq is equal to eight centimeters and Angle RPQ is equal to 45 centimeters and angle PRQ is equal to 75 centimeters. Construct a perpendicular line from point R to meet line PQ at M. What is the measure line RM? So I couldn't like uh, do the construction on camera because I'm the one holding the phone while working out. So here is how my figure is. As you can see, it's very clean uh, and it has sharp points. So your pencil needs to be very sharp as you're doing your construction. I'm sure you've sharpened your pencil well and we here i'll explain uh pq is eight centimeters then we're told rpq is 45 degrees and prq is 75 degrees so you're supposed to add 75 and 45 you get 120 you subtract from 180 because interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees so you'll find that here is 60 degrees so uh uh construct a 60 degrees going up it will meet this 45 degrees and that's how you'll find uh point r and then from there take your compass and the pencil drop make an arc on line pq also this side then stand here at this the first arc make a, an arc down stand here make an arc and then you'll have this point and this point and the question is what is the measure of line rm rm so you measure from this point to this point and you'll find the answer is five centimeters. I hope that's correct. Uh, next, we move to 48. Uh, the following table shows a timetable for a certain aeroplane flying from airport S to airport V. A passenger arrived at airport T at 1.30 p.m. How long did the passenger have to wait to depart from the airport? So the passenger arrived at 1.30 p.m. at airport T. And as you can see, arrival time is supposed to be 2.50 p.m. And it, the plane leaves at 15.10, that's 3.10 p.m. So how long did the passenger have to wait? So if he arrived at 1.30, then suddenly he left at 15.50. So supposed to calculate this one 30 it becomes plus 12 you have 13 30 hours plus this one is the time that the plane left so it is 15 10 hours minus 13 30 hours we borrow one from this side it remains 14 here it will be 60 60 plus 10 is 70 70 minus 30 is 40 then 14 minus 13 is 1 I've borrowed here one, it remains 14. When it comes this side, it becomes 60 minutes. That's why I hope that's all understood. So that is one now.
Question 49. Uh, Brenda has X books. Amina has thrice as many books as Brenda. Juma has 10 books less than the total number of books both Brenda and Amina have. They have a total of 86 books altogether. Which one of the following questions can be used to find the number of books Brenda has? So Brenda has X books. Amina has thrice as many books as Brenda. So that will be 3 times X, 3X books. Then Juma has 10 books less than the total number of books that both Brenda and Amina have. So X plus 3X is 4X, 10 less, so minus that. They have a total of 86 books. So when you take the total of this, it is 86 books. So X plus 3X is 4X plus 4X is 8X minus 10. The total is 86. So, this is a question. So, uh, let me just tell you, uh, 8x minus 10 is equal to 86. This one might come this side. Let's just work out so that we find the question. It will become 86 plus 10, that is 96. 8x, so we divide by 8, divide by 8. 8 here once, 8 here once, twice. So x is equal to 12. And x stood for the number of books that Brenda had. So the A question that you can, which one of the following books, following questions can be used to find the value of the number of books Brenda has. So this one can give us x for Brenda. So the question is this one. 8x minus 10 is equal to 86. Uh, the bar graph below shows the amount of milk in liters a farmer got for his farm in one week. Which two days, which two days following each other in the week had the highest total production of milk? Like consecutive day, if it's like Monday and Tuesday, or Tuesday and Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday, Thursday and Friday, Friday and Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, like that. So let's start with Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday and Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday, Thursday and Friday, Friday and Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. So Monday, uh, this one here is 15, 25, 35, 40, 45. Monday is 15. Plus Tuesday is 20. Tuesday is 20. Plus Wednesday is 45. Wednesday is 45. Plus Thursday is 25. Thursday is 25. Plus Friday is 30. Thursday, Friday is 30. Plus Saturday is 35 uh, Saturday is 35 plus Sunday is 40 so this one is 35 this one is equal to 65 this one is 70 this one is 55 this one is 65 and the last one is 75 which two days following each other in the week had the highest total production of milk? So as you can see here, the highest is Saturday and Sunday.